I'm Brenna George and I live in Winnipeg and my studio is in the front hallway of our house. I've never been able to have an outside studio. I've tried a couple times, but it feels too much like an office, like going to work. I like to be a fluid part of my life where I can work late at night or early in the morning or in little bits and pieces. So here I am in the front hallway. I work very small because of that so that I can fit um, my pieces into storage and also so I can work in this little hallway space. I grew up in Victoria, BC and I spent a lot of time on the beaches hiking with my family and building little sculptures out of twigs and rocks and sticks and leaves and hollowing out rose hips to make little bowls or stacking um, shells together in pyramids <laughs> or making little pathways in dirt with twigs and sticks. I went to Emily Carr in Vancouver and I studied sculpture. I ghosted the painting classes at night because my best friends were taking painting, but I was doing sculpture. My work is often journaling. It's things that happen to me and I address them, but in a sideways way or abstract way. I always want to make things and I want to make things that are personal about and about real issues that happen to people. And the issues that I know about are ones that happen to me. So I, I use those ones. I have done work about romance before in my older works. I did a series called Winter when my last relationship was ending and I started making big abandoned wedding banquet tables to address that. I do a lot of work. So before this series I had done two sets, two different years of a hundred days of art. It's an Instagram challenge where you do a hundred days of continuous art, one piece a day. So for one year I did the botanicals, the plants in my yard. I did a little oil painting nine by 12 each day. So I sat with a plant, just being with it and getting to know it. And then the next year I did the same thing. I went out and sat with the plants in my yard every day again. This time though, I was working with the idea of making them a story, like a romance between two plants. What were their situations? They were, plants are trapped beside each other. They're, they're rooted, so they can't move around. So I was thinking of that when I have them side by side. And then I was altering and saturating the colors to help bring along that story and to make them more like romance no novel covers. It was very escapist, this work and also affirming. I was trying to decide like, yes, I love this house. I love where I live. I'm choosing to live here. I guess that's when I was starting to have uh, doubts about my relationship with my partner. And so I was thinking, yes, I do want to stay here. I love this place. And when you're in a very long-term relationship, like over 20 years, 30 years maybe now, could it be that long? 25 years. It gets, I start thinking, hmm, this is half of my life. Should I be doing this? So I worked with plants. Again, looking very sideways at an issue, not straight all looking sideways at it. It was partway through that series. I thought, well, why am I doing metaphors? If I'm talking about love, why don't I just talk about things that love each other, not trying to put that on plants which I don't know if they have love. So I decided no more metaphors. I'm just going to talk about couples straight on. So that was the next year, a hundred days of art. Could I do it? The other times I wasn't able to do it. <laughs> I got to 53, I got to 72. I never got to a hundred. Could I get to a hundred this year? I started in again, at same size, nine by 12 oil painting and then try to address this issue of 
what makes us stay together? What, why, who do you become when you're with another person? Do you become different if you were paired with someone else? Or are you always the same person? Do you bring yourself to that mix, whatever it is? I also was trying with the 100 days to work on portraiture, but pressing myself to like the breaking point so it wasn't totally detailed. So I wouldn't be able to futz. I wouldn't be able to capture everything. It would break apart my painting style. That's what I was hoping for. I did this random gathering of images on the internet. I would find an image and it would spark me. And then I'd think of a couple or a person to go with that. Another couple that I thought would work really well together is Mr. Dressup and the Fairy Godmother. Mr. Dressup was always very kind. He spoke slowly and carefully and was very nice to Casey and Finnegan. And then the Fairy Godmother was always trying to help people in need, trying to give them their wishes. So I thought that they'd have fun together and it would be a very playful relationship. I researched uh, 70s wallpaper patterns for color and I sort of put that in the background as a rose bush but it's actually from a wallpaper and I've really had a lot of fun with Mr. Dress Up's shirt. He has a pretty great big 70s bow tie on. It took forever to paint. I don't think you can tell that but it was very fun and difficult to paint. And then the magic sprinkling above I painted that and smeared it out and painted it again to try and get it loose and magical. I made some couples that I thought would be really sweet, good couples. And one of these was Servius Snape and Snow White. Because Servius was a potions master and Snow White was always getting into trouble with being poisoned, I thought he could rescue her. And then he was very gloomy and she sang all the time and had all these animals around. So I thought that she would cheer him up. It would be a good pairing. When I painted this, I really liked how I divided the canvas right in half at his hands. His hands were like the magic going down and then leaving it raw under there. So unknown, what's going to happen? I don't know, raw magic, a possibility swirling under there and then him being helpful and kind, raising her up in a serious, in a serious way. It's about helping, helping, magic to help. And I did spend forever on his face trying to get it looked like the actor in the movies. Um, anyway. I first showed some of these works at a bakery in town, Caked with Love. And um, I tried to do a piece that was named after their bakery. This is called Cake with Love. They did wedding cake, so I thought, well, I would do this man popping out of a wedding cake and his bride mushing into the cake. So I really worked with um, the making the, the, the beautiful dress swirl, swirl like icing into the cake. But it was tricky because I was trying to make the cake masculine, sort of a cutout, and her to be more luscious cake-like. Making the icing patterns in the dress that translates, see the circle right into the rim of the cake, so it's the same. But and also making this muted, undescribed, undefined background of softness and muteness so they can just be in a gentle, gentle space. That sweet, sweet kiss and be very gushy. A very gushy piece. I don't know, the bakery didn't even comment that it was named after their bakery. Oh well. I didn't just search the internet for images. I found what, things around me and here's a toy that my kids used to play with. I have three kids. They don't play with toys anymore but they have a lot of them. This is Geodude. I was thinking who would tough Geodude love? Geodude would probably like a rock character because he's a rock so he'd like the moon. So I researched old fashioned photo props where they would, uh, people would sit on um, cutouts of the moon and get their photo taken, lovers would, and smooch. And so I put uh, Geodude in the moon and then I thought, hmm, maybe Geodude actually wanted something softer. So I was playing with this 
hard edge of the moon and the soft softness of the character the human character they're blending blending soft soft hard and soft also the rich deep deep thick color and then pale pale wishy-washy in there to make it softer i would take the same collage and i would project it twice and then i would paint it two different ways or alter it some way this one uh, shows the same woman but she has a choice between two partners i like these the painting in these because remember i was trying to break things apart and i did not paint any background in this one this is raw canvas and this one is just um uh, just dashes for the water and just a thin wash of yellow for the top is she the same person if she chose one or the other would she still be the same person or do you change when you have a partner looks like there's a blob on that one let's get that off I do a lot of internet searches to see different images and I choose a man and then pair with the woman but then I started thinking about well about just the monitor being like the way we interact the monitor as being where we find partners nowadays and so hiding behind or being the monitor just a whole bunch of people being monitors I do like the drippy monotone gray grungy look of this one I really did a lot of oil and very little pigment and so it's sort of glazing and then tipping it further what comes next after you've done one idea and then jumping on and advancing that idea you know in the digital world we use emojis to show our emotions but this one is super saturated color just like zingy zingy yellow and thicker thicker paint i didn't know there was a pinocchio emoji when i did this I didn't know there was an upside down face emoji when I did this. And then I had the full bodies as nudes and it was just too raw. I wanted them to hide behind their emoji. So I changed it up and I glazed, glazed, layered on top. So their bodies were still there, but mainly it was just there holding up, you know, emojis. I had these little tangents or little tiny mini directions I go off of and one was a uh, robot love I don't know what to say about it. just Minecraft it seems like all the young teenage boys and young boys are loving Minecraft so thinking of Minecraft love but how they'll grow older anyways I was just using the classical form and then robot and then the communication and within that, then I found some photographs, black and white photographs the artist did of robots and men smoking beside robots. And I was working with that, taking that and putting that with old, old paintings of women. I love the um, bronze I used in this. I made the reflection like a different world that's all a harsh, hard, metallic world in the reflection. And she's tapping him on the shoulder. Hey, don't forget me. I'm looking after a little baby. Come away from your robot lover. Because it's one a day, some days would be holidays or celebrations. And this was day of pink day. So I did a whole completely pink painting. And I was inspired by Saskatchewan arts officer, Doug Townsend, who I was at an opening in the nineties and he had this giant belt buckle that said fag on it. I thought that was so cool, especially in the prairies when it can be so conservative. And so I put it on this character here and Doug did come up to me at the opening and say, I didn't get my grant because I just overwhelmed the jury with too much variety. Well, I'm still doing that. I'm still like, going in all sorts of directions, but I have made now a bounding box for myself. I decide boundaries for a project. Like this is just couples. This is just nine by 12. This is just oil painting. And within that bounding box, then I just let myself explode. But if I don't have that bounding box, I, I, I can't do such good work and I can't be extremely creative and prolific. So 
There we go, day of pink, and it is very pink. It's all a whole monotone painting with just one color with um, pink, peachy pinks, purpley pinks, pinks. I started researching other artists and who they were in love with. I was interested in Joseph Boyce and his work in The Room with the Wolf and thinking that Bo Peep would be good discipline to keep the wolves away from him, the emotional wolves, the trauma wolves. I liked her discipline staff, her crook. And I, usually I don't go dark in paintings, but when I did in this one, it really popped. She became this flaming white figure and he was in this dusky dark place that's very playful though. All the hay, all the spattering of hay was very nice to paint. I, I, I like the tension between the uh, laughing hay and the disciplinary scowly uh, staff crook. Yeah, it was a nice uh, juxtaposition between the two of them. And of course, I couldn't just do one when I was doing a series. I had to do another one of him and this is him uh, in a big green coat. I don't know if it was a green coat, but I just wanted to do a more light one. That one was so dark. I was trying to break apart my painting to be more loose. And I think I was successful in this with her dress and how I just did a, a crisscross pattern, sort of like a see-through lace. And his coat is just single raw strokes. But in this one, this one took me way longer. It was just a different process. It was back to my older process of um, really going slow and making everything recognizable. I paint really long hours, so I like to listen to music while I paint. And sometimes when I'm very tired, I go to my two favorite go-to songs. I'm not gonna tell you one of them, but I'll tell you the other. One of them is Magic by Walk Off the Earth. And I can just listen to it over and over again for like 50 times and get tons of painting done. Uh, it's bouncy and fun and feels like anything is possible. So I just used a still from that video and put it with an old fashioned figure who's looking more um, subdued. And this was from, uh, was from a painting I found on the Tate website, Gwen John, A Lady Reading. 1909 to 1911, and I paired them together. I find these colors sort of old fashioned. They were sort of in that um, painting, that dark blue with the rusty red and the dirty yellow. And I like the rawness, the softness of it. Um, I didn't really overwork this one. The book did take a long time. The guitar I left sort of raw as if it's in motion. It's very soft, simple, and raw, like magic. What sort of magic could happen? And when I listen to YouTube, then the next song will come up and you just will listen to that too. And there's a, if I walk off there. One with a black hoodie, one with a white hoodie, black hoodie, white hoodie, white hoodie, black hoodie. Why did I need coffee now? Some of them might take more than one day, but this was definitely a one day wonder. It's just very fast, loose, fresh jokes. I like how I divided the canvas in half between not just the hoodie being dark, but the whole half of that canvas being dark. My son was looking at a lot of online videos of pink sheep. And uh, so I kept hearing pink sheep, pink sheep over and over again. Yo, what is up my prankster gangsters? So I painted some pink sheep characters. I took the walk off the earth, another still from another one of their videos. And then I put the ender dragon woman behind him. And this softness, the fluffy, fluffy, soft pink robe. And the, only the music in defense of the swirling anger madness of the woman. It's a real um, contrast between the two of them. I spent a long time again on this one on getting a portrait perfect, trying to really get it to look like Ryan Marshall, really working it so that you could recognize the person. And of course, I did one pink sheep painting, so I have to do another one. I can't just do one of something. 
I found this still of Douglas Fairbanks from Taming of the Shrew and he was lounging so lazily in this chair I thought it suited pink sheep and I thought well pink sheep would like to have a cowgirl to look after him to wrangle him so I found a picture of a real live cowgirl and I put her in there I painted the fluffy flyaway pink top with a hog's hair brush to give it that scratchy light look. And I painted the practical angular plaid flannel top with a chisel brush. It was a really nice painting contrast between the two of them. These are not pictures of me, but a lot of what I am dealing with comes out in my work. And I just, this is about desire. And I went to the Science Museum and I saw that they have these lights that project on you and then make your shadows different colors. You can be a normal color, your shadow can be purple or red. And so I was thinking about how our desire, we look normal on the outside, but we have different levels of desire in here. So um, I made her with a hot desire and him with a mm, so, so desire. I love painting her swooshy swooshiness of her dress. And I love that I double layered his shadow. So it's got that orange that goes to yellow and then the mix of the green stripe in it. It's a very topsy-turvy world of handstands and hidden desires. Desire. I was trying to see if I could break things apart. They're both doing the same thing. They both have the foreground figures showing the raw red desire of the devil creature and the shy skittish horse. And then the people are faint. In this one, they're blurred out. They're blurry, they're scumbled, they're blended, blended, blended. And this one, they are see-through, not even represented, just represented with a line. So they're both doing the same thing. I was just doing it in different ways. This one's like a quick, quick message and this one's like a long read. I especially like this one's that way I feathered the breath over top of everything so you feel the hotness of the breath. I was looking at the Disney Belle character and I made this whole narrative with her in this dream romance escapist scenario where she was in love with the ghost and this got me into times of day, like this is early sunrise, and I painted them very uh, flat graphic. Her dress is just one flat shape. The water is just a smearing with the palette knife upward. And he is this skull and crossbones. I like the thick thickness of her dress and the thick thickness of the water and the haziness and indecisive lines of him. I kept going with Belle and the Ghost. I did Belle and the Ghost like she could touch into the ghost's heart. This one's a lot more lighthearted, the pink pinkness of it all, the swirling. I really loved her dress and I gave her a lot of weight underneath her shadow so that she was anchored and he was light and airy and floaty and see-through. I think that was a really good moment when I discovered that I could put her hand going right through him because he was a ghost, so I could, I could do that. And that just was a good moment in painting for me. I started painting libraries as a place that they could be, these couples. A place that was quiet and would just allow the two of them there to think it started with this one, this very crowded, narrow bookshelf with these fast, jagged strokes. It's all blue and yellow except for the warm, warm, luscious, naked man sneaking up behind her to surprise her. I think this is reference to when things aren't going well in your relationship, you start to go into fantasy, you start to read lots of books about people who are doing well and romance that is happening for other people. So I think that it was like an ode to romance novels, this 
this library space that I started. No reason I didn't start it for any reason at all. So I search for libraries and I search for images of people reading. I came upon drawings of women reading Charles Martin's ink drawings. And I looked at those ink drawings and I made them full oil paintings of women reading. So I would take their books out and give them cell phones, make them modern, but have this thought space where they could be together, this couple and what narrative they are. And I was also referencing the beautiful, beautiful lush velvet of couches. When I grew up, we had a red velvet couch that had an embossed flower pattern in it. I love that couch. It was rich. And this is that color, that lovely, relaxing velvet. I gave each room its own window. In this one, I gave it nighttime window and this one a daytime window. This one, they are also on their devices together, but separate but still in this space, still in this communal space together. I had a lot of fun with the lighting, thinking of the light coming from above and the lamp illuminating the ceiling. Also, I did spend forever trying to figure out her hair and I ended up getting her glasses and hairdo and sneakers. I just went all out with her and then he was just very ordinary, plain suit. This is another from another Charles Martin ink drawing of a woman reading on the couch. And then I was looking up 60s performance artists and I was putting them together with their different energies and playing with the movement in that, the movement of the books, crazy jumble books, his manic energy waving around, smeared out and her just in her own space, but them together. I think this one was where I really combined the rawness, the rawness of the fast strokes and the books and but her keeping the in holding the image together, keeping a, a beautiful image too, keeping that detail and caring, but also letting the wild fresh side come out. I think I really did that in this one. The library series was a good thing for me. It's the same idea. I just redid it. This time I made the library green because green represents knowledge. And I made a round library. I did find some amazing libraries. I wanted to paint them all, but I couldn't. But I chose this one, which was round, a round library. So cool, round shelves. And put the performance artist in and stuck her on a ladder. So she's just quietly observing in this painting, I love that I smeared out, smeared out a lot of his hands, but kept her dress like many shades of pink and soft. So it's a calm space. Again, they're just the two of them in this contained cerebral space. And what will happen? What will happen with them? I did like to paint windows. So they weren't trapped in the library. They had some escapist outdoor space to them. So the window was important. There were elements in the library that had to be there. There had to be the library. There had to be books. There had to be seating. There had to be a man and woman and there had to be a window. Parameters, right? I like to work with parameters. People say, are they self portraits? Is that a picture of you and your partner? They're not portraits of me, but anything I paint is a portrait of me. I could paint a flower and it'd be a portrait of me. But a few of them did sort of turn out like portraits of me just by accident. This one oh, turned out to be a portrait of my first boyfriend and I just because it ended up looking like him. Uh, Nick Moran, a photographer who I lived with in Montreal when we broke up. I really like how I X'd out their eyes like they're bandits or exes or raccoons or pirates and then I put the bronze on there again that bronze representing hard solid unforgivingness 
in it and then washing washing layering over top of like the teardrops to make them old-fashioned and faded yes we didn't work out it was sad he was very playful creative person but I just felt isolated there away from all my family and friends in a strange city I lived there for a year but I couldn't make it longer than that everything a painter paints is a self-portrait. You can't help it. You may try and hide it, but it's always going to come out. Who you are in your brush strokes, your choice of color, your composition, not just your subject matter. So I, some of these are more self-portraity. This one for sure, it's a painting about painting. It's uh, hiding behind the canvas, all about me, 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 taking time to paint. And my partner just behind a rug, not getting any attention. Me, me, me with the canvas. I like the edges in this one a lot. The fluffy red of the rug, soft fluffy edge, and then the hard black edge of the canvas, the two contrasts in it. And then the pink peeping flesh bits of the hands poking out and the tops and the sides. Me, 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 working on paintings. Another one that seemed like it was about me was I found a painting of a self-portrait that an artist did. And I did a copy of it, simplified it. And then I put in the image of her model and I found a picture of a man at Mardi Gras just really having a good time, very, wearing very skimpy outfit. And I thought that would be a fun model for her. And just sort of observing the world, gathering images for all over the place and enjoying it in a quiet way at my easel. I didn't try to make this self-portrait, but I think because it's a woman painting, a painting, that it is a picture of me painting all these paintings, all these couples. The next series after couples the one I'm working on currently is Land Body. And it's where I'm going out in nature and experiencing the environment and having interactions there. How does my body interact? Like this one, I am stomping in the ocean water and that's sort of aggressive, stomping, heavy weighted. And then I, because it's video, I take many stills and I paint different things that I felt in that moment. And this one was where you, I stomp, but then the cold icy ocean water slap back at me in the sparkly spray so this uplifting spray that made me feel alive the aggressive feeling of stomping i am getting smaller in my work i'm going to disappear pretty soon well i'm painting outside so i could paint really big but i have to carry them around so again i set a bounding box again with my series i'm just doing this size five by seven this time. And I like being outside. Some series are done inside, like couples was all in the computer and drawings and at the easel. And these ones are experiencing outside doing planner works and then coming back into the studio and doing studio works. Well, there's these ones are definitely self portraits. No more metaphors. smell like oil. They smell like oil paintings. They'll store really, really well. They're so small. This is the third series. This is the third series of paintings of 100 days I've tried to do. So I had boxes of paintings. But was I successful? Yeah, I was successful. Yeah, I was totally successful, man. No, I was a failure. I failed. I only got to 73. I, I don't know what happened, but I just stopped. So, yeah, no, I couldn't make it. I did loosen up. I think I broke apart my rigid 
portraiture and I think I took some pressure off my feeling of what should I do about my relationship. I, it just can be what it is for now and it's going to evolve just like my paintings evolved bit by bit, piece by piece, adding on a bit of knowledge, changing things up. But I'm really glad I could share these with you today. I'm glad you could see what I paint and see all my work out of the vault of the basement. All the work came out just for your viewing pleasure. Thank you for joining me today and bye.